Welcome to the November 2023 episode of the Seedling Stage Knitting Podcast. Uh, my name is Athena and I am a Chinese knitter living in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, and I also work here on the weekends at a local yarn store called the White Coast Wools. And this is my little space on the internet where I chat all about my knitting projects and sometimes about crochet and sewing too. My last episode absolutely blew up. So welcome to a lot, a lot of new faces that found me from my last episode. So thank you for uh, watching my video. Uh, I never expected one of my video would have, I think now there's 80,000 views. Like usually I just had a few hundred views and I would be satisfied. So I'm really glad that a lot of people have found me and uh, I knit a lot of uh, rare patterns from Japan, like Japanese designers and Chinese designers. Uh, so if you find those uh, patterns interesting, please keep following me and I will bring you more of uh, Asian dating contents. Um, and also uh, last week it was my birthday and I had a big birthday sale and thank you for everyone who have joined uh, to buy some of my patterns or have uh, bought some of my or uh, some of my own uh, wanted patterns on my wish list. So uh, thank you, thank you a lot for your support. Uh, I guess that's all the introduction I want to say. I still have a lot of uh, knitting projects today that I want to show you. Um, there's actually a lot of whips than finished objects that I'd like to show. Um, yeah, so here, uh, please grab your drink or your snacks or your knitting projects with you and let's get started. Uh, so I'll start with what I'm wearing. Ta-da! Uh, this is my new finished objects. Uh, this is quite a popular common pattern. This is the camisole number no. five by my favorite things knitwear. Uh, it's just uh, it's just a top down uh, camisole with double rib and a double knit band for the armhole and the neckline. It's quite a simple design. Uh, and uh, for this one, the more interesting for me is the yarn. Uh, I got this yarn from a friend in New Zealand. Uh, that's the Ahuru. It's a merino and possum blend yarn. Um, so it's kind of a specialty from New Zealand. And I just had this one skein with 400 meters in a sports weight. I also uh, just want to find a one skin project that I could use up this yarn. This is a very warm, fuzzy, comfortable yarn. So I think like a winter camisole uh, to wear as an undergarment would be fine. And I'm really glad that I chose this pattern. I think I had been hesitating between the twist loop uh, top by other loop and this one. Uh, I think this one is just more basic uh, and it goes with more styles. I think it's just with my, it's, it's just more of a sporty style that I would like to go for. So I decided to go with this one and I'm quite happy with it. And actually I needed another yarn to finish this project. You can see after my 400 meters, uh, I used up and it's still kind of short and above my belly button and for a winter warm garment I would like to knit something longer so I added just another section with a leftover uh, Sunday yarn from Sunday Scar. Uh, that's a fingering weight merino yarn. Um, I guess that's okay. Uh, and I did some modifications. Um, for one thing, I've seen a lot of knitters who knitted this pattern are reporting that the armhole, it, it's just like there's too much fabric on it. So I, uh, I've actually for the armhole, it was fine for me. I just followed the pattern all the way through. 
and I think I reduced the needle size to 2.75 and the major body I was knitted in 3 millimeter uh, and the neck band I reduced the needle size to 2.5 uh, millimeter and also I think I uh, decreased uh, I think I picked up a few stitches less, I think only like two to four stitches uh, less than instructed by the pattern. So it's mo so mostly it was the effect from uh, reducing the needle size. Um, uh, the pattern called for a fingering weight yarn, but I used a sports weight and I, th I think I actually prefer the fabric used by this sports weight because it's a much thicker fabric and nothing is see-through. Uh, initially, I was just going for uh, wearing this with no bra, uh, but this possum yarn, it still irritates my breast a little bit, so I uh, put a padding inside. I'll bring it out. So, <laughs> so I have this like padding from my random other bralettes, and uh, I just slide it in so that uh, I just feel a bit more comfortable wearing it. Uh, and uh, before I actually tried to just sew this padding uh, in the, into the wrong side, but I find my sewing skill like with this stretchy fabric, it just doesn't, um, it, it makes my fabric parkering a little bit and I don't like that. So I think I just insert this directly <laughs> inside the garment is fine. So just a little extra tip for you if you're knitting this one. Uh, you can recycle one of the padding from your uh, bralette. <laughs> and another modification I did with the waist shaping. Uh, I added a waist shaping here and you can see the there are some decreases here that's not uh, in the original pattern. Uh, for the waist shaping, I uh, decrease in the same rate as the increase so that was I think I uh, just decreased one stitch each at these four locations uh, every four rounds and I did that for uh, eight times total and then it just has a very nice waist shaping um, yeah I think it's it looks very nice yeah, and I think that's all I have to say for this pattern. And I'll go on to my next finished object. Ta-da! So this is my next finished object. This is a balaclava. Uh, let me just wear it a little bit. Whoops. So it's like this. And the pattern is from a Japanese yarn store slash uh, knitting design. Uh, it's called Daruma uh, and you can find them on Instagram. This pattern actually is only available as a, from one of their yarn kits. So you have to buy the yarn along with the pattern together and the pattern is not available uh, just as a digital download uh, as itself. It's quite unfortunate and I have to admit that uh, I kind of get the pattern from a personal source that I just would rather not recommend to anyone. Uh, so I think if you really want to knit this pattern, I will uh, I, I will just talk about the construction a little bit and hopefully maybe you'll be able to uh, cook up something for yourself. Oops, the sunlight was really bright in just a moment ago, so I had to go there and adjust. So back to talking about the construction of this cabled balaclava. Uh, this is a bottom-up construction. Uh, you first just knit in the round in a fisherman's rib uh, to like for about 10 centimeters or so. And then uh, they change into just a single rib to just knit a small section like for, for, where, for where you fold this balaclava, like just for about two centimeters or so. And then uh, you change to knit flat to knit this um, long, uh, uh, to, to knit this cable section. And this cable section includes some just regular cables and some like basket well, weave kind of cabling and some like Celtic kind of cabling section. Uh, and then uh, you just knit flat for these cable section to about here. And then you will just leave partially of the stitches for resting, like rest these stitches 
and rest these stitches uh, and only keep knitting flat for this middle section and then you uh, keep knitting this like Celtic cable kind of section uh, above until you like finish at about here uh, to the same length as uh, the length, uh, the width that you have rested your stitches and then you uh, sew up the stitches here to like the, the edge of the knitted uh, piece above uh, and then you just sort of have this hat and then just pick up stitches around the like the face area and knit some one by one ribbing like it's a very short section about one centimeter or so so it's just a simple construction and I guess you can uh, just adapt this construction with any other uh, cable stitch patterns that you have in some um, stitch dictionary that you have or you can just swap with a uh, plain stockinette as long as you like sort of figure out the geometry uh, I think this construction is really nice for a balaclava type because it's have it, it has this like kind of box shape that wraps around the hat very nicely uh, the yarn I used is some yarn from my mom uh, and my mom got the yarn from my grandma so it's a very it's a heritage yarn from China like almost as old as I am uh, so this is one of the yarn it's a very beautiful like deep red color uh, normally I'm not a red color person I love green colors uh, as you can see from like most of my alternating projects uh, but I think I'm okay with this shade of red it's a very beautiful shade of red it's like the red bean paste sort of color it's a little bit purpley it's a little bit darker uh, it's like a cold red rather than like a warm red so I, I just prefer cold tones uh, so I think it's it's a nice color for me and it's like reminds me of the little red riding hood uh, fairy tale uh, it's it's kind of eye-catching and if I'm riding a back bike where if I'm riding a bike while wearing it uh, it's very uh, obvious so like people won't hate me <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah that's the balaclava. Uh, it, the pattern doesn't have like a special name. Like these Japanese patterns, they usually just have like a generic name. This one is just called a uh, cabled balaclava. And I will put some link for uh, the kit of the pattern if you want to see some like blow up pictures of this design. All right, uh, my next finished object. She is here. Uh, this is. A crocheted rabbit Ta-da! Uh, and the pattern is from a crochet book this is the Pika Po 3 uh, by uh, Yarn uh, Skenko um, this designer uh, she has a series of these cute animal crocheted amigurumi type of animals and uh, this one I got was uh, the third of the series uh, and uh, I crocheted this rabbit but you can see I made quite a lot of adjustments uh, the original design was a little I think it was a boy rabbit it's called a Gilbert rabbit and with uh, the trousers uh, but I uh, crocheted uh, a very red uh, red and black dresses is like giving the flamenco dress kind of feeling uh, this uh, obviously it's not for me because of the red dress this is for my friend uh, Yuran it's a gift it's a wedding gift for her uh, it's long overdue uh, but I, I finally managed to have time to make it uh, she uh, uh, Yuran has appeared on my 13th episode we just did an episode together uh, she is a crocheter but she likes those like micro uh, very fine lace type of crochet and I have to admit like my past videos the especially that that one the we filmed that episode in the outside and my uh, audio quality was not really good but you can uh, see the character of Yuran and this is supposed to be her and we have named her Yolanda um, rabbit is her spirit animal so uh, that's for her 
and she loves the like bold red colors and she likes wearing dresses a lot uh, so this is for her so for this pattern the yarn i used was a she piece stone wash that i have used to knit some of my animal friends uh, at the back it's a little bit blurred, but the rabbit and the sloth uh, was knitted from the Knitted Animal Friends book. And I just had a lot of leftover yarn from those projects and I used the gray to make the rabbit. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough yarn, so I had to use a different color yarn So the for the ear. So the ear is a little bit bluey, but I think it still looks fine. Uh, the uh, some of the solid colors I used a Chinese yarn. It's called Meng Wa Wa Er Hao Xian. It's 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 like an acrylic cotton yarn from China. Very very cheap, like half a dollar for fifty dollars uh, for fifty grams. So I I had just a lot of random like those yarns. That's really really good for crochet. Uh, from this book, I have crocheted another project i have made the polar bear from before i just really like the design style of this designer it's really cute so normally i, I don't like amigurumi i find like the ami the crocheted uh, single crochet fabric to be a little bit like grainy it's not very smooth but i think that with this style i'm okay with crochet just because the crochet fabric is much more stiffer and the animal they hold its shape and like the knitted animal is all like very soft uh, but this it just have this very it, it's just like very cute and stand there Oh, that's a cute animal and I also like how the designer um, designs the facial expression of these animals it's just so cute with the little pink cheek uh, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about the dress uh, since I, I adapted the pattern so instead of uh, separating from here to do the two uh, like trouser tubes I uh, just increase a few stitches and just do this uh, lace stitch and this shell shaped crochet stitch was also adapted from a design of this book this uh this hen the this is the greta hen and she has a shawl i just adapted the pattern of the shawl into uh the dress so i think it's nice and she has and she has a pompon at the tail uh but actually the pompon was attached to the dress and that's from the design uh, it's not attached to the rabbit so it's a little bit weird but yeah <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it, it, she still looks cute and uh yolanda will be picked up by yuran next month when she gets here in vancouver uh, so that's all my finished objects and then i'm gonna move on to my whips and i have a lot lot lots of whips so let's begin so uh, the first whip you have seen from my last episode but i have finished a lot Ta -da! so this is the back panel of my uh, duffy sweater again this pattern is from the uh, daruma store from japan uh, and this i think it's a collaboration design with uh, Atelier uh, Naluse, I believe, uh, and also uh, you can only get the pattern from the official kit uh, from Japan, and I got this from a personal source that uh, I would rather not share. Uh, so again, I think I will just quickly talk about the construction so that you can try to figure out this pattern by yourself if you like. Uh, so uh, I've only knitted the back panel uh, and it's uh, knitted in the flat in pieces. Uh, this is an asymmetrical design featuring I, I think four different kibble sections. Uh, the edge panels are in the seed stitch like so uh, and uh, the, bottom, uh, the bottom ribbing is the uh, twisted rib. Uh, and the cable section, there is like a cable section with the uh, waves with like a middle uh, stamp thingy. So that's one panel. 
and then uh, and then just a regular cable to divide that and the middle is uh, like a honeycomb uh, cable design. I think you can find these kind of uh, cable stitch from like a stitch pattern dictionary. There are quite a lot of those, like maybe from the Vogue knitting, they have a very comprehensive uh, stitch dictionary. And there are also quite a lot of Japanese knitting dictionaries that I could recommend to you. Uh, specifically, there is one called uh, uh, Aaron uh, 110. Um, I have that one there and that includes a lot of cable stitches. Uh, and then another cable, uh, simple cable section to, and then transition to the uh, diamond shape uh, cable section and the middle of the diamond is a seed stitch. Uh, and then there is like a tree stitch here. And then there is a tree stitch section with uh, just like these twisted rib that uh, twist, twisted stitches that goes to this shape. Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you can find this kind of uh, stitch pattern in like a stitch pattern dictionary and all you have to do is to figure out how to assemble these different uh, stitch patterns into a panel together and then uh, so after you, uh, when you knit it up to the arm hole you will uh, bind off a few stitches and then you will uh, decrease stitches to do the uh, shaping and I haven't finished knitting the back panel yet this is this has been quite time consuming so I think I will keep talking about the construction of this one as I knit more and speaking of that, that one I just kind of paused this uh, Duffy sweater because this is quite time consuming and although I was deciding that this is going to be my uh, Christmas knitting project, I was, uh, I was going to like sew some uh, green and red embroidery onto it after I finish it. But I just don't know if I can finish it in time and this is a quite complicated project. So instead of finishing that one, I kind of cast on another Christmas sweater and I have finished a lot. Ta-da! Oh, sorry for the noise of my needles. This is a super chunky knit and this design I can provide you. Uh, this is from this book. Uh, it is one of the little booklets from the Sandis Garn, the Norwegian yarn company that's been quite popular. And it's, it is from a few years ago. It's called uh, TEMA 74 um, and featuring uh, this uh, Marius design. This uh, pattern is called Chunky Marius Ladies. Let me show you here. And in this book, it features this Chunky Marius sweater for ladies, for like a boy, girl, or uh, for a man. And also they have a, a, like an iron weight version of this Marius sweater. This is called Marius Classic Dumb and then a Mar uh, the same Marius Classic sweater but for men. Uh, I can show you this. This is this is the Aaron design of the Marius sweater and the one I'm knitting here is the chunky one on 9mm needles. I have never knitted anything in 9mm before the largest needle size I've used is 5.5 millimeter for a sweater. I've knitted the cardigan number eight back in my episode two, and I already found that sweater to be quite thick. But this design, although it's using nine millimeter needle, it's using quite a fluffy yarn. Uh, the original design called for uh, one strand of their uh, Bostet alpaca and another strand of their cos uh, and here instead I use a Chinese yarn uh, that has been mailed to me uh, by one of the Chinese yarn collaborators. Uh, the yarn uh, was here it's it's very similar to the Bostet alpaca from Senniskar uh, the original pattern was a brushed alpaca, like a very fluffy yarn, and this one is a brushed merino like with a nylon core. So it's uh, very similar, just instead of alpaca, this one is mer merino, and I'm just holding this yarn uh, double. 
and this is resulting in a very fluffy and squishy fabric and it's still lightweight although it's in 9 millimeter and it's very soft so I can definitely just wear it to the skin and won't feel any irritation so I think it will be okay it feels quite thick but it doesn't feel heavy so I think at least that's good uh, the contrasting red color it may look familiar it was just uh, the red yarn that I got for, from my mom uh, that I knitted the red balaclava uh, and together I think the color contrast looks very good uh, my partner yesterday he said this looks like red bean paste ice cream uh, if you go shopping at like a Chinese store then you or a Japanese store you know what a red bean paste ice cream is it's a very Asian thing uh, and it's tasty uh, and I like the color work pattern I think it looks quite nice uh, and I only cast this on a Monday and today is Thursday and I've already separated the sleeves so 9 millimeter needle is so fast it's so fast. I, I think I can finish this sweater at least by the end of next week uh, or, or almost this week if I just work on it really really hard and finally I can have a sweater to wear. I think I've never knitted something in 9mm needle and this is indeed an experience I think knitters should at least experience once so um, yeah it's a nice project and I think I'll be able to wear the finished object in my next episode and going on to my next whip so I have uh, cast on another uh, balaclava type of project and this is what I have knitted and from the stitch pattern maybe you can figure out what this is uh, this is kind of a popular pattern this is the grandma core hood by uh, Kuto Vakika and uh, it's like this <laughs> I think it's just after I finished my uh, red balaclava I just really enjoyed balaclavas because it's like two in one you have a hat and a neck warmer in one piece and I just immediately want to cast on another one and I just saw this grandma core hood design and really liked it and I happen to have this uh, variegated uh, green yarn it's like a, a wool acrylic uh, chain net yarn from um, one of the Chinese yarn company that I collaborate with is uh, Shiku Yuntuan and unfortunately you cannot get it here in uh, North America or Europe so yeah but I guess you can probably find something similar from your local yarn store uh, it's like um, it's it's very it's kind of similar to, in terms of texture to the uh, Camaro's snap nook so if, if you want a substitution but the snap nook is like a solid color yarn not a variegated uh, and uh, this one in terms of construction is the opposite of the uh, Daruma cabled balaclava I just showed you earlier before so this one uh, it starts from the top uh, you cast you cast on and knit this piece flat first and then you uh, pick up some stitches around this um, like this square that you've knitted and then like that you just keep knitting in the flat um, and then you probably just draw in the round to knit the like the the neck warmer section and then pick up stitches around the face to knit like a tunnel so it's uh, it's just the opposite this is the top-down construction of balaclava and the other one is the bottom-up construction of the balaclava and the whole thing features the same uh, lace pattern um, that I find it works pretty well with this kind of uh, fuzzy yarn uh, and uh, I'm, I don't know what I think of the variegation in my last episode I said I hate variegation and I still find the variegation to be a little bit busy especially with the lace pattern but I don't know maybe after the wash and block it will open up a little bit and things can be more relaxed so we'll see <laughs> and my next whip is also an acquisition and also a Christmas knitting project Ta -da! 
I think I'll cover my face to like focus all the color of this. Um, this is the Christmas sock yarn uh, that I just got at the yarn store that I work at. Uh, this is the uh, flat sock four ply Christmas metallic. And this is a shiny, um, it's like a sparkly, shiny kind of Christmas uh, sock yarn. And we had this yarn from two or three weeks ago. And I had been resisting not to buy this yarn because I had already so many knitting projects going on and I don't have time to knit more socks. But I failed. And eventually I had just to get this yarn because it's so Christmassy and so sparkly. Uh, it, it's just very beautiful and it looks, it makes me very happy. So I think um, I, can, I should buy this. And also I want to knit a pair of socks for my grandma because she deserves it. Uh, yes. So yeah, one, I think one uh, ball of this it's a hundred gram. It should be able to make two pair of women's socks. And when I knit socks, I always like use a contrasting color for the toe and heel. So uh, with the contrasting color, it will be enough uh, to knit two pair of socks. Uh, and I have knitted this much. This is mostly just my bus knitting project or my mindless knitting project. And I always use my own same pattern, the no frills toe up socks. Yeah, I think toe up socks is the easiest construction. And the most amazing thing is that I have knitted this much. I'm about to knit the heel and the pattern still hasn't repeated itself yet. It's like a very long uh, pattern repeat, you see? Uh, it's it's still continuing. I think it's about to reach the repeating part. So it's uh, it, it's a nice combination of the patterns, and I really like it. And look forward to finish at least one sock <laughs> uh, before Christmas. Uh, all right. And next up, I still have another sort of a sock knitting project going on, and it's here. And it's a big sock. It's a Christmas stocking. <laughs> uh, this one is going to be the uh, Arnie and Carlos uh, stock Christmas stocking mysterious knit along. Uh, I I just saw the their announcement for the uh, AM call this year. Uh, I think yesterday, and I decided to join it. I've never like joined any knit along before. So this will be my first ever um, knit along and mysterious knit along because like I'm that kind of person that requires certainty. Like I need to know what I'm gonna get out of this project before I embark on this project or buy the pattern. Uh, but this one, this uh, I'm called by Arne and Carlos is is gonna be a free I'm call, and I've knitted their uh, Christmas some of their Christmas balls designs from before, and I trust their design. Uh, I'm sure their like Christmas color work design is gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be beautiful, and um, I've and they've given out like the construction and the plan of this Christmas stocking this year. It's just gonna be like six rounds of color work and each round there are uh, 72 stitches. So there's not a lot of work to do every day. And I think I would enjoy having like six rounds of color work daily in the month of December. So yeah, and uh, their homework for me, <laughs> like being a good Chinese, you know, good, being a good Asian student, so that's like finishing all the homework in the perfect score, like beforehand. Uh, I've finished. <laughs> uh, their homework is to finish uh, the toe before uh, by the end of November 30th, so that starting from December the first, you can knit a little section every day. And I've finished. <laughs> I've finished the toe. Uh, and their, uh, but I, I actually didn't follow their pattern. Uh, their pattern was like th their increase is along four lines, like along four lines. Uh, but like uh, it's their pattern was designed better for a DPN. Uh, I hate DPNs. I knit uh, prefer like Magic Loop for socks. So I just sort of just used my um, no frills toe up sock 
a toe pattern to knit the toe so it will look like this uh, but I follow the same like stitch numbers so it doesn't matter as long as I have 72 stitches uh, when I start knitting the color work it will be fine and I also have the yarn so this is my green emerald yarn and this will be my red yarn and this will be my uh, white yellowish yarn uh, I just happen to have these from my grandma uh, when I started knitting, my grandma gifted a lot of her yarn stash for me, so the red was from her. Uh, this one, this is a fluffy, uh, fluffy texture acrylic kind of yarn, and there's some yellow speckles. I actually used this one to knit the sheep in my bobbly hat that I showed in my last episode. Uh, this makes a very good texture to knit the sheep, like the white part of the sheep, like hair in the bubbly hat pattern uh, yeah and I think it will be very cute to uh, serve at my uh, stocking color uh, the green one is just a random Chinese superwash yarn uh, and as I've said in my last episode I hate superwash like back that time I I don't know anything about superwash or non superwash uh, I just like wanted to try that yarn and this color is called Christmas green so good <laughs> it's good to knit for the for a Christmas stocking and it's in DK weight so that's the weight they require for uh, yeah and then I'll just I think it's a very nice color combo and like even if I run out of this yarn I still have like a million balls of green yarn in my stash that I can substitute so I wouldn't worry <laughs> if this green is not enough. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for my first ever uh, Amcal experience. Uh, I mean, I grew up in China and like in China, Christmas has never been a thing. Like we don't get a day off for Christmas. Like we celebrate the traditional uh, Chinese spring festival that like uh, that's in usually in January or February. Uh, but I like but we do like have some Christmas decorations happening in like stores or streets just a little bit in China sometimes during Christmas and I really like the aesthetics of Christmas because there's the green color and the white color on top of the red color like in the Chinese um, New Year uh, the Chinese Lunar New Year festival like everything is red the main aesthetic is red, but I think it's more fun to have a little bit more colors, especially I love green color. I also love love the like the little like twinkly twinkly lights. Um, yeah, so I think I also love the aesthetics of the Christmas stocking color work. Uh, and yeah, there's one more thing. Uh, so this is actually a modification from last from the finished objects from last time so it's like a double fo <laughs> if i counted uh, this is the uh, dark crofters cap that i've finished in before my last episode but i made some modification since last time i showed you this project uh, so uh, last time I just knitted this one according to the pattern, but it was very short, so it was only about this much. Um, uh, it doesn't cover my ear, or it doesn't look very great on me, just personally feeling. So I ended up picking up stitches from my cast on edge and knit some more ribbings uh, top down. So this little section in sort of like a very mild stripe pattern uh, with my addition just so that I can knit the hat into like to have like a longer uh, here here I don't know what's the word so that it just covers my front of the hat and my ear perfectly and it also fits perfectly uh, beneath my biking helmet and it's very warm it's uh, also quite tight around my head and just it's a very cozy and very beautiful hat so yeah uh, I think now that's finally everything uh, every knitting crochet projects that I have to show you today and thank you for staying with me uh, for so long and uh, if you still have more time I have some personal 
uh, chats and thoughts <laughs> to just chat with you about. Uh, first thing I uh, last time I've said I've been uh, doing job search just to have a stable uh, day job instead of like keep trying to do or uh, to use to like make dating into a career. Um, and I think my job searching has been going well. Uh, I've been interviewing for a few companies or positions and I think I'm sort of confident that like at least one of them <laughs> will have some results. So hopefully by the end of next episode, like by Christmas, uh, I will have some good news then. Uh, and also I've been having some thoughts on the designing. Uh, last time I've said that uh, I just had, had been feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the whole designing process, like with all the pattern writing and grading that I want to just pause and not doing it anymore. Oh, not, I mean like not doing it for a while. And then I realized that uh, designing is not it, it doesn't equal to pattern writing or pattern publishing. Uh, it, it's if, if I just want to design something for my own to wear, uh, I, I think I would still feel quite passionate about it. Like if I don't want to have like a publishing worthy design or like to write some pattern for profit, I would still love to do that. Uh, and with my potential day job, I will be able to have the freedom to have the time to just design something for myself and don't worry about like the income part of the pattern sales. So um, I'm thinking I could, I'm thinking maybe I should try a new design or pattern writing model. Like uh, I always keep some notes when I'm just like designing something for myself. And what if I just like publish these things, like write these things into a recipe and just publish it for free or just like for one or two dollars just for the little effort that I've put into it. And if I don't have time to grade this into multiple sizes, I could just publish this in my own size. So just so that uh, people can modify it or uh, just like just knit in or just change the gauge or something and it I mean if you really love some of the designs I make you will be able to you will have some direction to replicate it instead of just like looking at some of the designs and I also don't have to like go through all the um, difficulties and challenges through like writing and grading um, because I feel like grading and like the pattern technical editing that side side of thing it's it's becoming sort of a barrier for just designing something simple uh, I mean if I am not to make this into a full business I I could just like I I, I could I should still be able to just design something for the fun of myself uh, and just share this there's like as interest as a passion to the community around me and just hopefully people wouldn't criticize me of not doing size inclusive like not doing size inclusiveness or like not having a good technical editing uh, I, I once had one of my pattern tech edited and it cost quite a lot like I I could say that my earning from the pattern just barely covers the cost that I paid for the tech editing. Uh, I, I'm not saying that uh, the tech editor uh, doesn't deserve their, their work is like a very solid, very good work and it, that it deserves that uh, amount to be paid. Uh, but I don't know, maybe like for beginning designers, the community maybe sh could be <laughs> more lenient and just allows for patterns without the formal editing but also if i'm about to publish these kind of recipes i'm not going to charge a lot because yeah like if i charge the same thing for the uh ten dollars that also wouldn't be fair um yeah so i've just been considering some new 
uh, pattern designing model. Uh, and yeah, it just might be something like the little uh, double rib scarf that I showed in my last episode where I just share a basic recipe for free. And if people want to have like a more uh, solid, like tested, tech, uh, tech edited, of uh, graded pattern, they can always go for like those published designers like the Alex scarf if they, they want those but if they just want something simple and free they can look at my recipe so uh, that's just my thoughts and please let me know what you think of this new um, proposal of a designing model um, and if you find this is fine then I could probably just write some of my past design, like I had the vine bralette. I could just publish my notes for my own size into uh, just like one simple recipe and like for free or just for a very cheap price. And I'm just write down a few um, advice for suggestions for modifications. And let me know if that's of any interest to you. And that, of course, and that won't take me much time to do um, and yeah and I don't have to have all the stress of the all the like publication formality side of the designing um, that I would would feel a bit more overwhelming um, yeah okay so that's the little chat from me and I hope you find this episode so interesting and the next my, my next episode I believe will just be before Christmas and uh, by then, I hope you would enjoy uh, the Christmas, the holiday season uh, for whatever holiday that you celebrate and uh, stay cozy for winter or if you're in the other uh, hemisphere, um, stay cool. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. If you like my video, please uh, like or subscribe if you haven't. And uh, if you like to support my uh, knitting design or the video, making more videos, you can uh, donate to me on Ko-fi or uh, buy my pattern on Ravelry or gift some of the patterns on my wish list. So the links are all down below and all my projects and notes are on my Ravelry and my name uh, under my name Athena Liu. And thank you for watching and at the end of the episode I always play a bit of piano and today the song I'm playing is called Seedling uh, by a contemporary uh, composer uh, called uh, Poppy uh, Acryo. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just print her name down and don't want to butcher it. Uh, so hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, have fun knitting. Stay safe. Stay cozy. Bye.